Hello, my name is Diego Chavez and I'll be talking about my business brief article. Um, I thought it was pretty difficult to find um, an article online that I wanted to do this project on because there was just so many to choose from. Uh, the volume was pretty shocking of the amount of content and um, it's just crazy how really big of a social issue it is for women pursuing roles of leadership. There's just so many obstacles, so many different variables that are in the way. Um, but with that being said, I eventually came across an article on sherm.org, which kind of touched base on all of the aspects we've discussed in class so far. But the title of the article is uh, Workplace Discrimination Erodes Confidence in Women's Abilities. It's created by um, the author Matt Gonzalez, and it was uh, published this past March. Um, but the article mainly covers three topics, including how um, men perceive women in the workplace, how common discrimination is for women pursuing roles within companies, and how we as a society should listen without judgment. Um, and, you know, perception, I think, is everything. And this article explains how big of an issue it can be for women today in roles of leadership and just in roles within organizations. But the article starts by explaining um, the study that was conducted at the University of Southern California at USC within um, Marshall School of Business. But the study took a couple months to conduct and just kind of showed how both men and women encounter workplace discrimination and how the psychological consequences of perceived gender discrimination at work manifest differently for each sex. Um, it kind of also talks about how a very similar material we've already discussed in a previous model, module that content falls along the lines of how perceived gender discrimination reduces both men and women's sense of belonging amongst their company and amongst coworkers. But most importantly, the article discusses how women show more signs of decreased self-efficiency when faced with um, these kind of gender discriminations. Um, the article then, you know, goes to explain how multiple women who've been told that they cannot handle certain roles um, within their respected organization, but men can. So um, a lot of these women are just pretty much just being told that they can't handle certain positions. And um, one thing that I found to be one of the most interesting ideas of this whole article is that um, a lot of men who participated in this study felt that their organization um, was likely to discriminate against them to reduce inequality against women. So some of these men actually believe that they weren't considered for certain positions because their management wanted to offer the position to a woman to better balance the scales and help their case towards making things right after years of injustices against women within their organization. And um, yeah, so in this class so far, we haven't really um, heard very many opinions from men or touched on their perspective, but um, this very much could be a reality for some people, even though women are far more likely to be discriminated against. Um, some men truly feel that their opportunities are taken by certain individuals because the company feels that their diversity even um, their diversity is more important to get right, even though that person may or not may or may not be a better fit for that specific position. But um, after talking about that, you know, just getting back to what the article talked about, um, it then reference a, uh, references a report by the Pew Research Center and kind of talks about how just how many women truly face discrimination in this country. And it comes out to about four in 10 in the US throughout history have experienced some type of workplace discrimination. Um, this could include receiving less support from senior leadership, uh, treated less incompetent, treated less incompetent as others, and being passed over for an important assignment. But even worse, most of these women explain cases of unwanted sexual advances and remarks within the workplace. Um, almost all these women who experienced these actions felt as if they couldn't go talk to somebody or be taken seriously. And what I took from this article is that was the, the biggest issue outside of the initial discrimination is that these women didn't have an outlet 
or somebody to go to that would take their issues into consideration. And that's the reason why I kind of liked this article and why I kind of chose it is because it points to towards a solution rather than just bringing up the issue. And the solution is um, is to to kind of push aside judgment. Um, that's the article's way of kind of overcoming these issues. And um, it, it, it points us directly more towards HR departments within these bigger corporations. Um, HR departments need to be, you know, a place with no judgment, a place where people can truly go to express their true feelings for both men and women, but obviously women are discriminated against far more. And so, you know, ultimately this would increase trust within an organization instead of telling people how they should feel, um, which is what we've seen for years now. Um, HR needs to just be better at acknowledging how people actually feel and work with them to kind of come up with a plan to not only make things better, but to develop a plan towards a higher position within the company and just making things right. Um, the article also points to um, Anna Buried, who helped kind of conduct one of the researches that I just talked about, but she's the chief revenue officer for this um, sales platform called Outreach. It's pretty big, but she explains how um, this process that, that I just talked about was something that kind of she came up with and she applied it to her own company outreach and she kind of she developed um and promoted a diverse set of talent and and fostered a workplace where women of all backgrounds can thrive so in doing this she got this uh, in this firm right with all these different women and then um created nine different hr teams that are supposed to be actively involved in creating awareness, uh, mitigating biases, and creating um, inclusive environment. So because of all these different changes, I mean, this took months, right? But with all these different changes, she was able to, to develop this kind of enclosed culture and kind of experiment how, how much of a difference having a different HR structure would do for that big of a company. And they had pretty shocking results um, according to the research, they experienced an increase of about 39% of the, their global workforce becoming women, and the percentage of women being a part of leadership roles increased now to about 45%, so almost half of their leadership positions are now um, women, and the only thing that they changed is just their HR structure. They just created a workplace that is open for communication, for trust, that takes all these different things into consideration and um, really just changes the culture. So and that's what I found to be the most interesting. That's why I picked this article because I think that would be a good solution for for any organization, any group. And I think being heard and taking consideration of how people are feeling is probably the first and the biggest step towards any change. So and um, yeah, so like I mentioned before, you know, I really was shocked to see how many different articles were out there. It's kind of overwhelming to pick one because there's just so many, it's kind of sad to see. And um, yeah, so I, I think a good practice for organizations is to just bring people together and discuss topics just like this. Like how I said, was, like how I said before, perception really is everything. And I think if top level management is able to take this idea that, um, that Miss Buried came up with of just restructuring HR, making a place more open for people, and relaying that down, um, down an organization towards the towards everybody else that there really can be a change. Um, you know, speaking from a personal experience, I always knew these social injustices took place. I always knew that this was a a real issue. But until I took this class, until I started reading into these articles and everything else, like you really just don't know until you know, until you take the time to consider these um, these things. And um, I think um, that's the best way to see change is to, um, just to hear people out and, and um, eliminate judgment. But um, yep, that was my article. Thank you. I'm looking forward to hearing any comments anybody might have, but uh, I appreciate it. Thanks.